Hey guys, in lieu of recent events in DP New York, a huge collection was stolen, um, probably close to the collection we're going to talk about today. And it was, you know, it's hopefully will be recovered. I really think that our community should rally together and help Sean recover his collection from that was stolen in GP New York. Now, this large collection was recovered recently, and it was recovered in kind of a community effort. I would say definitely a community effort. So the young Carlos Domegas Ogate, uh, he was 28. He's now being charged with a felony uh, for possessing stolen property. Uh, the break-in of two people broke in to the store late at night. They stole free display cases, which they knew. I, I guarantee you they've been to the store before because they knew what to take. Free display cases worth $60,000 plus. Kind of hard to do unless you know what, what those what's in that display case. So they tried to sell these cards to Card Kingdom. Card Kingdom, uh, they had a graded. They graded the Alpha Ancestor Recall and they made an offer. But it was refused. A second transaction in April was valued at approximately forty-seven hundred dollars. I believe that was paid out. And a third transaction at the end of April drew suspicion because these people are now selling thousands of dollars of cards twice a month, three times a month. Now, Card Kingdom provided police with the list of one hundred and twelve cards the individual had mailed, and ten of those cards were not reported stolen by Pat's Games. So Card Kingdom gave the police the name and address. I mean, yeah, okay, that's a terrible. Way. I mean, if you're gonna move stolen cards, don't like it's so. You're gonna get what you deserve eventually because it's all trackable, right? So officers sp spoke to the individual selling the cards online, but they told the police the cards were Carlos's this before. Stopping the interview, police found several boxes, protective sleeves, and binders in his residence. Uh, police spoke to the owner of the store and the manager and found that these cards were the same. They were exactly the same. They were 100% confident. Now, this is obviously uh, someone who understands magic reporting. Now, this is the general news. The general news is <laughs> a lot different. Um, I, it's interesting to compare... Uh, the Houston Chronicle with the Austin, um, I believe the first article came from Austin, and the Houston Chronicle says, yes, the guy who stole the magic cards had a York girlfriend. I don't know why he has to say this stuff, but it, it's whatever. Very glad it got recovered. I definitely suggest altering some cards or having a collection of cards that are unique in the front page. That way, it, you know, if you have... Let's say a collection of foreign foil filers or um, homoclides or something kind of random, sharks. Then it's going to be really easy to identify that collection as your own. And when someone tries to sell it to a store in person or online, they are going to be like, hmm, this is an odd collection. I, let me go on Facebook and check to see if any collections have been stolen in the past. But uh, definitely a really good story, and you know, hopefully the guy from uh, GP New York uh, recovers his collection as well.